There is a time to heal. This is the title of this meeting. It is a responsibility. But those who are sick, this is also a statement of great hope. This is the time to heal. Not to do so it means to have a sick world. We must choose the time and be in time, live in this moment, not to be passive and allow time to dictate the tempo, so much so that in the end we only get there by opposition. Time is truly superior to space. Here's one of the riches of these days of dialogue. There is a time to heal. The Parva Carta guided us, Professor Meloni told us. We will not kill ourselves. We will help each other. We will forgive ourselves. Of course, we will always have to fight against the viruses. We all understood this in this pandemic, even those who had the illusion that wealth would shield them and could stay healthy in a sick world. We are all vulnerable, and the real vi virus, which is evil, transforms to affect life, to make it useless, so much so that men themselves discard it, and therefore discard themselves. Let's not accept as inevitable any great divergence between countries and even within countries, between young people, people with low skills, women and informal workers who have been disproportionately affected by job loss. In the economic field, maybe a reborn multilateralism of states, uh, of international institutions, is a beginning of renewed awareness that is decisive for all pandemics. We will be safe only when everyone is safe. And this applies to everything, from tackling climate change to choosing investment in the Sustainable Development Goals. As people animated by different religious faiths, we know that loving God also means loving our neighbor. To those who decide that some must be left behind or even not allowed on board of this same boat, and the most fragile always pay the heaviest price, as a decision, as a presumed price to be paid to solve problems, we say that everyone suffering concerns us, that we are able keepers, and that this guides and must guide our personal and collective choices. Only if we protect the most fragile, we will all be safe. The very painful experience of these long months made us understand, that, at least for a moment, that we are in fact in the same boat. We understand it. However, without the Copernican revolution that reminds that the ego finds itself not because it is at the center, but because it enters into a relationship with the neighbor, we can easily forget this awareness, so much so as to resume the logic of save yourself or me first, which can also become a collective me. And now, after what has happened, we say with even greater conviction, us first, together, together, because only together we get out of it. The pandemic has reminded us that everything is linked, that the house is really a common house, and that exploiting it without sense, thinking that a piece of the house is mine, calls into question the stability of the whole house and the future of those who are entitled, like us, to live there. If we really can't leave the earth, better than we found it, at least it should not be worse. We fight the pollution that threatens and actually already dramatically affects the health of the earth. I believe that Patriarch Bartholomew is the witness, to be the witness of the attention to the common house concept, and I would like to invite you to give him a round of applause. Is really great. It's not by chance that the document of uh, Pope Francis Laudato Si was presented indeed by Patriarch Bartholomew.
So, if everything is global, even the solution of problems requires the involvement of everyone and the strengthening of the places where decisions are made together. Above all, we have to work to make them effective precisely because they are armed with the knowledge that there is no future without the other, be him my neighbor or the neighboring country. This hope cannot be dashed. We cannot resign ourselves to not achieving the objectives indicated as necessary. Our ethical commitment compels us to do so, to do everything so that this objective at least translate into work size. Professor Meloni has indicated some of the concerns that have animated the discussions of today. Your presence here, Prime Minister, demonstrates your particular attention in preparing for the next G20, tapping in the res reserve of wisdom and ethics that comes from religious faiths. In fact, when we choose the collaboration for the achievement of a common goal, we see that this gives good results, as it has happened in the scientific world in the quest to identify, to identifying a vaccine. Shouldn't this be the path to follow, as we are aware that if we work alone, we lose, while we succeed if we work together? Doesn't it have to be true for everyone? Only when the peoples of the poor countries are all vaccinated can we feel safe. Faith seeks high things, inside and outside of themselves, and for this reason, they can allow us to look into the distance and therefore seek the common good. It's written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, I will also open a road in the desert, I will lead rivers, and then he adds, the, the fast that I choose is to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free. And then the prophet says, then your light break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up speedily. The path that allows us to cross the desert is the path of dialogue. Pandemics spread and heat even more forcefully if the walls are many and high, while the bridges are few and fragile. We are fully aware that the wound of one heals if that of the other one is healed. The path we have taken is the path of dialogue among faiths to fight all seeds of intolerance that cause so many wounds. Has the Second Vatican Council, Council solemnly proclaimed almost 60 years ago for the anti-Semitic seed to be repudiated and deplored by anyone and any time. And the same concern that we must have to heal from every seed, always disturbingly fertile of ignorance, intolerance, all the new racisms choosing the path of encounter, of meeting, of education to combat religious illiteracy. The path is bold, already traced in Assisi, in uh, the prophetic meeting held and desired by St. John Paul II to fight the pandemic of war and to achieve what only together can be achieved and enjoyed, peace. But there is much to do so that this becomes culture and a meeting point between peoples and people. The opposite of the pandemic, a universal evil, is universal brotherhood. And this is entrusted to each of us, as in COVID. Every individual has understood that he is responsible with his attitude for the other. Martin Buber said that the only thing that matters is to begin with oneself, because the Archimedes point from which I can lift the wall for my part is the transformation of myself. Seek peace in your place. And when man finds peace in himself, he can start looking for it in the world. Today, we have all found peace in ourselves. We have helped each other, and we started seeking peace in the whole world. Really, we have helped each other. Yes, we also measure the problems, as Meloni said, we measure the economic interest 
which are often obscure and fearsome, like the Mafia. And for this reason, in this climate, with humility but with determination, we wish to offer these reflections to those who must and can make decisions and find common solutions for the benefit of all. Pope Francis added the P of peace to the three Ps, planet, uh, people, planet, prosperity, and peace, which is not only the resolution of existing conflicts, but also the right to peace, which means seeking disarmament of the arms trade and atomic disarmament, because this force we are, is not evaluated sufficiently with, for its destructive capacity. It's a terrible threat. Think of Cain's instinct, always crouched at the door. Be careful not to neglect this reality, which is never inert, as we have done with ep epidemics. And then many pieces of the world war continue to pour the pollution of violence, hatred, prejudice into the sea of the world, terrorism, Betrayal of humanity and blasphemy of the faith is the fruit of this very pollution. We do not want fraternity to be at best a romantic expression. Rather, it must be a convinced practice of shared commitment. On this path, as Professor Meloni reminds us, we have traveled the first decisive and by no means obvious mile, the first mile that has dissolved our violence. It was unthinkable 40 years ago. We must continue along a path that opens up by walking on it. The memory of the people killed in the places of worship, at which we will study how to continue, has united us. The authentic religious response to fratricide is the search for a brother, as we are told by Pope Francis. We are the keeper of Abel, and, but in some ways also of Cain, because violence does not overcome violence, and God protects him, because God's dream is that finally Cain learns to dominate his instinct and recognize what his brother has his own. We thank the Foundation of Religious Science for this extraordinary effort they made, all of them, because they really worked. Uh, uh, and they, I think that they all deserve a round of applause for this extraordinary effort. The virtual the efforts made by this virtual relay of the G20 interfaith, as, which has taken the baton up the baton here in Bologna, a city that has always been a city of dialogue, which two years ago hosted the community of Sant'Egidio, and starting from its welcoming porticos and university is a repository of so much wisdom in this regard. And I would like to remember the first president of the foundation, Nina Andreata, a master of moral clarity, who has always studied economics to benefit individuals and not vice versa, to fight against greed and speculation. Moral and ethical clarity require inner refinement, the only way to resist divisive viruses. Dialogue between culture, understanding between faith will prepare us for this moment. And let God bless us as we can do it. Faced with so many difficult questions, a, a famous poet wondered about how many roads must a man travel before he's called a man? How long the cannonballs must fly before they're banned forever? How many ears must a man have before he listens to people cry? And how many deaths must there be for the same poet to know that too many people are dead? Today, religious faiths find an answer together and entrust it so that the road in the desert may grow, starting with the next G20. The tears of many and the tears are all the same and important in the eyes of God. 
and they push us to do this. Well aware, of course, that after one hill there will be another hill, as another great man of peace, Mandela, used to say. But also we are aware that only by choosing to climb them together we will be able to overcome them, because we are and we want to be all brothers. God bless us and bless the next G20.